Hello everyone, we meet again for reading tips. I hope you remember what we discussed earlier in the last video. It was about skimming, scanning and detailed reading. Now we continue today with something that is extremely important and that is time management. Now many of you might say that we know what time management is. We need to do one passage in 20 minutes so that we can finish three passages in one hour. But let me tell you, 20 minutes is a bit too much. You should try to do each passage in 15 minutes. Why? Well, the first passage is typically easy and that you do at a very leisurely pace. You might be able to score 13 out of 13 in that passage because as you know, one passage has around 13 questions. So you might be able to get full 13 in that one passage. But what with the second one? It might be a bit more difficult. What if it takes you 25 minutes? You would feel the pressure because the next passage would have only 15 minutes. And by that time, you would not be able to focus on finding answers because you will be very tense about whether you'll be able to finish the passage in time. What is the consequence? You might get 13 in the first one, first passage, but nine in the second because you're a little pressurized. And by the time it is the third one, you may be you may be so tense, you might get only around, let's say, three to four correct answers. What is the total of that? On the other hand, if you do, if you practice doing 13 questions in 15 minutes, you would have 15 minutes extra. And in that extra 15 minutes after you finish all the three passages, you can go back and check all the questions that you skipped because it was too difficult. You weren't able to find answer for that in the stipulated time or other questions. If you finished all the questions, you can check your true, false, not given multiple choice questions, short answer type questions or any other question that you found tough while doing. So from this itself, you know what you should do or how you should do your answers in 15 minutes. As we said in the previous video, you do spend around two to three minutes skimming, scanning and looking at the block of questions. So you have only around 12 to 13 minutes to do the passage and you have 13 questions. So that would be around one minute per question. So what you should do is in seconds, you should quickly scan and skim and find the answer area as we discussed in the previous video. You should quickly find the answer area and that should take you only seconds so that you can spend the rest of the one minute in detailed reading. And in that one minute, if you're not able to find the answer, you move ahead and do the next one. The benefit from this is that you would have at least looked through all the questions. And sometimes what happens is that when you're doing, let's say the third question, when you're doing the fourth question, you find the answer for the second one that you skipped. Let's say paragraph heading. You try to find the paragraph heading for the first paragraph or the second paragraph, but you were not able to quickly find it. But because you found the headings for the third, fourth and fifth paragraph, you have a limited number of headings to choose from. And it would make it easier for you to find the heading of the previous one. Let's say there were two headings that were very similar and you were confused whether the first heading or the second heading is the correct one. But because you did the fifth paragraph and you know that one of those headings is very apt for the fifth one, you would know very clearly that the other one is more appropriate for the previous question you would be more sure of that. But if you try to find, if you try to break your head for more than one minute on that one question, you may still be confused and you would have wasted a lot of time. If you hadn't moved ahead, you wouldn't be able to eliminate that extra heading. And having eliminated the extra heading by finding the answers for the other paragraphs, you save your time and you find your answer for the previous question. So that is knowing when to skip. 
I would call this ability to skip a question a skill because some students are so adamant that they have to find an answer before moving ahead. But knowing the right point where you need to give up on the question to let go of that question is a skill, I'd say, which comes over time, which develops over time. You know that it's time to give up on this. So you need to have an idea of one minute and an idea about would it be more favorable to skip this question and find others and would it help you find this answer faster because you can eliminate the other options. So all those things, being able to judge that is a skill and it comes with time. So you just take the plunge and learn skipping questions that are too difficult to do in one minute. Now the other skill that helps you do a passage in 15 minutes is guessing. Which type of questions? Well, summary type questions, specifically for those type of questions where the words are given in a box. Let's say you are doing a passage and you're trying to do a passage in 15 minutes, but you have only two minutes remaining and six questions remaining from a summary completion. So what should you do? Go back and check the words and find the answers particularly if you've been given words in a box, well, it would be tedious because the words would be so well disguised by synonyms and the sentence structures that it would be tough for you to find it. It would be easier for you to first guess and then when you go back and check, you might more easily locate those ideas and those words. So I would suggest that in two minutes, just do a guessing and put the words there. Once you've finished all the three passages last 15 minutes, you can come back and check whether your answers were correct. Usually a summary question is towards the end, that block is towards the end of a passage. So by that time you have some understanding of the passage. So the first thing you do is read that question from beginning to end, the block of question. You can check which word among the given ones are apt for that based on your understanding of three aspects that is what you've read what you know about the grammar aspects of a sentence and what you know about vocabulary and collocation so on the basis of that you guess the answers it would be easier for you from your understanding of what you've read so far and from your understanding of grammar and collocations vocabulary you should be able to guess the answers in the blanks, kind of like putting the right pieces of a jigsaw puzzle together. So what are the things you do in the last 15 minutes? You do the questions that you skipped. Let's say you skipped two from the first, two from the second, and you weren't able to finish two in the third. Altogether you have six questions. So you have enough time. So devote six minutes to that and you have still some time to check your true false not given multiple choice questions short answer type questions those questions that come as per the sequence of information in the passage tend to be a bit a bit difficult so you can never be over sure about your answers and you need to check your true false not given in the last 15 minutes so in that way you might get an extra three to four questions correct in that last 15 minutes so what would be the maths there first passage in the next in the third but you get an additional three to four in the last one that is a surer bet you have better chances of getting that through this and it applies for even eight band or nine band and the benefit from it is not only about the ease of finding answers but also the reduced level of tension. You are less stressed because you still have, even when you're in the last passage, you still have 15 minutes remaining. There's nothing to worry. You can check the questions that were difficult. If this third passage itself is very difficult and you've done the other two well, you can devote your last 15 minutes in that. Sometimes it takes, the third passage might be very difficult and it may not be you may not be able to finish it unless you have sufficient time so altogether it's in your advantage to do to go with the aim of doing each passage in 15 minutes when you practice you don't have to practice with all three passages take one passage and make sure you do it in 15 minutes 
Now, how do you ensure that you would be able to do a passage in 15 minutes? How do you practice it? So what you should do is put a 15 minutes timer. When the timer is off, see how many questions you were able to do. If you were able to do only eight questions, you were not able to even go through the remaining five. You haven't even looked at them. Your speed is not enough. So in the next passage or do another passage in 15 minutes and this time do at a greater speed than what you had in the previous one. So you understand the idea of the speed you need to finish a passage in 15 minutes, to finish 13 questions, to go through all the 13 questions in 15 minutes. So that you learn by this kind of practice. Set a timer, see how many questions you're able to do. I mean, there shouldn't be any question that you haven't even tried to answer. You should have been able to try each question to see if you can find the answer. So you need to spend one minute per question there. So if you're not able to do that, like you're able to go through only eight, you have to speed up in the next one. Let's say you are able to do 10 in that one. So that means you need more speed until you're able to cover 13 questions. That doesn't mean you're not skipping any of them. But skipping does not mean you don't read it. You try to find the answer. You spend one minute on it. But if you don't get, that is when you skip. So once you're consistently able to do 13 questions in 15 minutes, you are on the path to time management. You have learned time management. And it is very much possible. It is something that is done by all my students. Once they do it diligently in a matter of two to three weeks, they are able to finish a passage easily in 40 to 45 minutes and they still have 15 to 20 minutes extra. Try it, believe in it, and you will be able to ace your IELTS reading.